It has the voices of people just, uh, just like them in it. That's what we tried to do in this issue, was to, was to bring forward uh, the voice of the people that made this happen. Unfortunately, there wasn't really time to do the student voice, but we brought the voice of faculty, of, of teachers, we brought the voice of administrators, uh, we brought the voice of school board members and edu the Education Council and Prince Rupert. Those are voices that just sound a lot like the voices in, in your own uh, school district. So uh, that would, uh, that's what I'd say about that. What makes the difference in these schools is that they are confronted with a situation that they feel they must deal with. What's the best way to help girls learn in Calgary Girls School, for example, or, or in the inquiry schools? How do, we help, how do we help students to learn how to learn better? How do we do a better job of that? And so that's the question being addressed. And then an and answer seems to be, we're going to do it better if we challenge them, if we say, okay, here's a question. Now you find the answer. And then when they find the answer to respect what they have found and to respect the process by which they found that answer, and not to say, oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong answer. So this is what, this is what I think makes them, let us say, innovative. They have the fortitude, they have the skills, and they have the patience to go ahead and address um, this question that they have with the, the school in Prince Rupert, for example. The question basically, I think, was how do we engage our, our Aboriginal students, and for that matter, all students, so that they will connect with school. They will feel that school is connected with their own lives and that they will be motivated to do things that, that will help them to learn. Uh, and, and, and again, with the inquiry-based schools, the questions maybe are somewhat different, but basically it's a question of how do we help kids learn how to learn?